Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and welcome back to Beast Coast Pokemon. In this video, I'll be covering popular teams, archetypes, and strategies that you should expect to see at the 2024 Pokemon Video Game World Championships, which are about to kick off. Worlds, of course, is the premier event of the season, and this Worlds in particular is going to be really interesting because it's the first ever world where we're only allowed to use one restricted Pokemon. In previous restricted formats like 2010, 2016, 2019, and 2022, you were allowed up to two restricted Pokemon, but this is the first time in VGZ history that we're playing a single restricted world. And I think it'll be really interesting to follow from a viewer perspective as well as a team building perspective. As always, if you enjoyed this kind of content, it would really mean a lot to me and the team at Beast Coast if you left a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, give us any comments, feedback for what you liked, what you'd like to see more of in the future. It's so fun to make these videos for all of you, so thanks to you all for coming out and tuning in, and thanks to Beast Coast for hosting me. Without further ado, let's just jump into things. We have to start this video off by talking about the Calyrex forms. Both Calyrex Shadow Rider and Ice Rider have done very well in this format, winning tournaments, and they are two of the top contenders going into the World Championships. Calyrex Shadow Rider is very popular because, first of all, it's one of the fastest Pokemon in the format, and you just get access to a ridiculous move in Astro Barrage. There are a lot of different ways that you can actually build Calyrex Shadow Rider. Generally, you should expect to see Astro Barrage, obviously, as its move, but it's really flexible in terms of its items, as well as its Terra. For item, for example, we'll see things like Citrus Berry, we'll also see things like Covert Cloak, Life Orb, Spell Tag, you can even run Choice Specs on more offensive variants, for example, and so Calyrex Shadow Rider is immensely flexible in terms of the item selection. One way, of course, to build around Calyrex is to use a setup move like Nasty Plot or Calm Mind, and a lot of these teams will support Calyrex with just some of the strongest Pokemon in the format, for example, Incineroar, Rillaboom, Water Urshifu, Raging Bolt, redirection from something like Amoongus, Clefairy, or Indidi. Fire Ogre Pond is something that's been popping up more recently as well, and can be of course used for Follow Me while also being used for offense. These teams don't necessarily need to set up Calyrex in order to just win games, but a single nasty plot when you're not expecting it can allow these teams to snowball really quickly. Some teams will dedicate even more resources to enabling Calyrex, and you'll see Pokemon like Tornadus or Clefairy, for example, that are really heavily centered around giving Calyrex the proper support that it needs in order to just really quickly defeat teams. We saw a version of this win the Los Angeles Regional Championships a couple of months ago, and I think people will continue to explore and experiment around this concept. You can also expect players to run Hyper Offense Calyrex teams. These teams will lean more into Calyrex's offense and not use a setup move, and you'll often see items like Life Orb, Spell Tag, or Choice Specs. And the idea, of course, is to just do as much damage as possible with Calyrex. Tornadus in particular is a really popular partner with that Cover Cloak to set up Tailwind, and then of course also Disrupt with other moves like Taunt, and also deal damage with Bleak Wind Storm. One of the variants I've actually seen going into the World Championships is normal Terra Life Orb Calyrex Shadow Rider with Hyper Beam, paired with Chi Yu. Uh, can just be really oppressive, and Normal Terra is both good defensively and can actually be great offensively when you've got that Hyper Beam move as well. We've also seen offensive Calyrex Shadow Riders with Choice Specs and Ghost Terra on a team that's popped up recently with Galarian Weezing as well as Dondozo, and the idea behind those kind of concepts is that Calyrex is really oppressive in the early game. You often have to spend a couple of resources to deal with it, but if you spent those resources, then it's harder to deal with Dondozo in the late game. So. <laughs> Calyrex is definitely one of the top picks going into Worlds, and I expect a lot of the world's best players to bring this Pokemon at the major tournament. The next Pokemon to talk about is Calyrex Ice Rider. Calyrex Ice Rider won the North American International Championships, piloted by Patrick Connors, and I expect to see a lot of teams centered around Calyrex Ice Rider look similar to concepts like that, which is just surrounding Calyrex with a lot of good tools. It's interesting because Calyrex Ice Rider is really slow, but it doesn't necessarily need to set up Trick Room in order to win. We actually saw a newer version of Calyrex Ice Rider piloted by Fede Campo, a top player from Italy, and he won a major grassroots tournament organized by Victory Road. That team had tools like Rock Ogre Pond, Raging Bolt, Urshifu, for example, as well as Throat Spray for Graph with Hyper Voice and Shadow Ball. So the idea is that a lot of these Pokemon aren't actually super slow, you don't always need to set up a Trick Room in order to succeed, but Trick Room of course can be valuable. I think Balancey Calyrex Ice Rider teams will continue to thrive. We also see variants sometimes with things like Iron Hands as well as Zamungus and Ditto. These variants lean a little bit more into Trick Room. And then we have Hard Trick Room teams centered around Calyrex Ice Rider. An example of this came from North American Internationals where we had Calyrex Ice Rider supported by tools like Focus Ash Smeargle as well as Choice Scarf, Final Gambit, Annihilate, and Eviolite. Electabuzz, and the idea is to just set up Trick Room and sweep with powerful sweepers like Ursaluna, Blood Moon, or Torkoal, for example. 
I don't expect these teams to be as popular, but I think they can be really deadly. So a really smart player who has built a new Trick Room team around Calyrex Ice Rider, I think will be especially scary to fight against. The third restricted to talk about is Maridon. Maridon was really underrated by most players coming into this format, but after it won the first regional championships at Indianapolis to start off the season, everyone suddenly realized this Pokemon is pretty dang good. Maridon teams continue to dominate the online scene, and Maridon also got top 4 at the North American International Championships. Generally, there are a lot of similarities between Maridon teams. You'll have Maridon, you'll have Ferrigraph on a lot of variants, Tailwind is really valuable from something like Whimsicott or Tornadus. You often want a fire type on these compositions, and so we've seen things like Incineroar, Fire Ogre Pond, Chi Yu, even Entei to name a couple. And the idea, of course, is that you want to very heavily center around damage output from a ride on. One of the adaptations in the meta that we've seen is a shift away from Electric Terra to deal even more damage with your electric moves and discharge, and instead Fairy Terra, which is both good defensively to help you become immune to dragon types attacks, and it gives you access to a very powerful attack in Fairy Terra Dazzling Gleam, which can be used often to close close out games. One of the interesting things to note about Maridon is that we've often seen Iron Hands and Furgraph being paired next to each other on these compositions more recently, and so that's one meta adaptation that I've seen, and Fire Ogre Palm being used both offensively and defensively with that Follow Me is another way that I've seen people use this composition. But Maridon, I think, will be a very popular pick for Worlds. I'm mainly curious what kind of new innovation will happen with it, um, but a lot of the existing Maridon teams that are out there are just still just so deadly and so difficult to deal with. The next Pokemon to talk about is Terrapagos. Terrapagos is interesting because it actually got second at the North American International Championships, but its usage rate has definitely fallen off a good bit since then. One of the fundamental flaws of Terrapagos is that you are always just going to be weak to fighting type attacks, and with Urshifu as well as Iron Hands being as popular as they are in the format, you have a pretty major weakness. We've seen Terrapagos teams either center around choice specs, like the team that Aurelian Sola used to get second at NAIC, and we've also seen sets built around Calm Mind and Leftovers. Going into the Worlds, I expect that Terrapagos will not see as high of a usage rate, but I still think that a really strong player piloting this archetype can be very, very scary to fight against. I think people often assume, oh, I have a fighting type Pokemon or attack on my team, I can deal with Terrapagos, but the most seasoned Terrapagos players have really calculated lines into common fighting type Pokemon and attacks, and so I think that this is an archetype that still can be really scary, but like I said, it generally centers either around the Choice Spec set, which just aims to do as much damage as possible, or the Calm Mind sets, which stick around the field for a lot longer, but of course needed a little bit of time to get going. We've also seen Power Orb and Meteor Beam being used, and of course that allows you to deal a little bit of damage and get a stat boost immediately, and then Terrapagos becomes a lot more threatening while you can still protect and not locking into an attack. That being said, I think among the restricteds that I've named so far, I expect this to be not nearly as popular. The next Pokemon to talk about is Coridon. We've covered Miraidon, which has had really good success in this format, and Coridon still kind of feels like a Pokemon that's not fully been figured out. Of course, it's commonly paired with Pokemon that can take advantage of the sun, so you'll see things such as Raging Bolt as well as Fluttermane, which get their Protosynthesis activated. We also see Fire types such as Incineroar Chiyu being paired on these teams. I think that Coridon is really interesting because, of course, it has a lot of natural strength in itself. With Clear Amulet and with moves like Collision Course as well as Flame Charge, you're able to deal a lot of damage, and this Pokemon is just pretty naturally bulky as well. I think one of the downsides for Coridon is that you often have to commit your Terra because there's so many things that hit it for super effective damage, but I think that Coridon is a Pokemon that generally has not been nearly as explored as a lot of the other restricted Pokemon in this format. For example, I've gone up against Coridon teams that have Venusaur, a Pokemon that you very rarely see at a high level, but it can be very, very devastating. I've also played against variants with Rock Ogre Pond as well as Ditto. So to me, this is one of the more interesting Pokemon for Worlds. I think that a lot of people struggle playing against it, but it's not necessarily the easiest Pokemon to pilot either, especially because it is a Terra Hog. And so Coridon teams that I've seen leading up until Worlds either center around enabling a lot of Protosynthesis Pokemon like Flutter, like Raging Bolt. There's a variant with those two in particular, as well as Ditto and Rock Ogre Pond uh, that has been doing pretty well in online tournaments. We've also seen versions with Venusaur as well as Porygon 2 and Ursaluna Regular, for example. Um, but this is a big wild card to me going into Worlds. I think that there is a good chance that there are Coridon teams that no one has really discovered so far, and someone makes a big splash with it at Worlds. When there's sun, there's also rain, and we of course have to talk about Kyogre. 
Kyogre is an interesting one. I think that it, a lot of people think that it struggles to have the consistency in order to win an entire tournament because you often are clicking origin pulls. But at the North American International Championships, we saw two different Kyogre teams finish in the top eight. And I think that there's generally three different ways you can build around Kyogre. The first is very offensive, so using a choice item, choice specs, choice scarf, for example, or Mystic Water. The second is a really bulky set with Assault Vest. We saw Shiliang Tang get in the top eight of North American Internationals with a team that had Iron Jugulus, as well as Wu Chan, for example, making Kyogre really bulky and difficult to knock out, especially with Pollen Puff support. And the third one is Calm Mind. Calm Mind Kyogre in particular finished number one and number three and the top of the ranked ladder in the end of June and it's a new variant of Kyogre that's been popping up and the idea behind these teams is you support it with screens from Grimmsnarl, you've got Amoongus with Pollen Puff and Spore, and you've got just a lot of different tools like Double Fake Out from Incineroar and Rillaboom as well. So I think that all of these are really viable ways to build around Kyogre. The main question for me about Kyogre is its consistency because you do have to click Origin Pulse a lot with it. For example, the Calm Mind variants often will run Calm Mind, Origin Pulse, Ice Beam, and Protect. And so it doesn't feel great to have to rely on Origin Pulse so frequently. But, you know, the strength of a lot of the bulkier Kyogre teams is that you can afford to make a couple of misses because you're going to stay on the field for longer periods of time. Uh, the offensive variants are very popular with Tailwind. So something like Tornadus in particular is a perfect partner for Kyogre. Tornadus also can reset the weather with Rain Dance. And of course, it will have a accurate Bleak Wind Storm when Kyogre's Rain is set up. You also see a lot of anti-priority denial, and so, for example, you've got tools like Serena as well as Furograph often on these compositions to protect the Kyogre from things like Thunderclap, as well as Grassy Glide from Raging Bolt and Rillaboom, respectively. That leads us to our next restricted Pokemon, which is Zamazenta. Zamazenta is an interesting one. It's actually won a regional as well as a national championship this year, but it's often supported with really unique Pokemon that you don't see on a lot of other teams. For example, the Zamazenta teams that have done well, we've seen things like Chandelure, we've seen Tyranitar, we've seen Latios, we've seen Galarian Moltres. Part of the reason for these unique picks is because Zamazenta does a really good job of forcing out Ghost Terras from opposing Pokemon, so having Dark and Ghost type Pokemon that can take advantage of that is really valuable. The standard way to run Zamazenta is with Body Press, Heavy Slam, Wide Guard, and Protect, but some players also consider Iron Defense over Wide Guard. When you run Iron Defense, you make Zamazenta really difficult to knock out, and obviously you boost your damage output of Body Press as well, but it means that spread users like Calyrex can go for their spread moves a little bit more easily and more confidently. Zamazenta in general is interesting because I think it's a Pokemon that can have, feel like it has a relatively neutral matchup against a lot of the format, and so in a format that's this open and this wide, I'm curious to see how people will continue to innovate around this Pokemon. Those are the seven restricted Pokemon that have had tremendous success to some degree in this format. I think there are a couple of other restricted good Pokemon that I have my eye out on leading into the World Championships, and there's three in particular that I want to call out. The first one is Zacian. We talked about Zamazenta already. Zacian is an interesting one, and it has managed to make it into the top cut of regionals in this season. It's a tough one because it's been nerfed a lot since it was last legal, and it also can sometimes struggle given that you don't have a choice of item, and as a result, Incineroar can just come in and intimidate you, for example. And so it's a tough Pokemon to use, but with Sword Stands, you can of course boost your attacks that fairly quickly and deal a lot of damage. We've seen a bunch of different Zacian teams, some centered around Hyper Offense, where you just pair it with a lot of really, really powerful Pokemon. You set up Tailwind and aim to sweep, some that have some redirection support in order to allow Zacian to get that Swords Dance up and then start doing more damage. We saw a variant that even had Umbreon, for example, get top four at a regional championship. This is a really fringe pick in my opinion, but I think that if a team is not prepared for it, it definitely can sweep through you. The next one to talk about is Groudon. I think the main downside for Groudon is that it has to rely on Precipice Blades a lot of the times, and it's just such an inaccurate attack. And so when you have other restricteds that are allowed, such as the Calyrexes that have 100% accurate spread moves, it feels bad to rely on Groudon and then miss your pres Precipice Blades. That being said, I think Groudon can still be really oppressive. We've seen variants of it that are supported with Chlorophyll Pokemon, like Venusaur and Jumpluff, for example. Groudon, of course, sets up the sun, so supporting it with Pokemon that take advantage of the sun, like Fluttermane and Rageable can be really valuable. I think like Groudon is just not consistent enough to maybe win an entire tournament, but it certainly wouldn't shock me if you told me like a Groudon team actually made it to the top eight of worlds. Despite its usage rate being so, so low, I think that it can be really deadly. And because it's been so underexplored this season, it's definitely a restricted that people are not preparing for as hard going into worlds. And so someone who really figures out and cracks the code with Groudon, I think can have a lot of success at worlds. The final restrict that I want to talk about is Lunala. Lunala actually won the world championships 
back in 2019 and made it to the finals in 2022. In this format, I think that we've seen sets that have, for example, Power Meteor Beam as well as Trick Room. And Lunala's strength, of course, is that it's able to soak up attacks and, of course, thread in with Moongeist Beam and other powerful attacks as well. We've also seen variants with Calm Mind, for example. There was a version that had Calm Mind with Fairy Terra Moonblast, and the idea is that you just make Lunala really difficult to KO. You have support from things like Clefairy, Grimmsnarl, Incineroar, Rillaboom. And one of the nice things with Lunala is if you have healing from either like Leftovers, Grassy Terrain, or like Heal Pulse from Clefairy, you can often activate your Shadow Shield multiple times and get you back to the threshold where it can activate once again, which I think is really cool. A Lunala, of course, can be a great Trick Room setter as well, so it can be paired with something like Ursa Luna as well. That being said, Lunala just has not had that much success this season. Not many players have been willing to bring it to a tournament. So that's why I also kind of have it as a fringe pick where I could see it doing really well worlds because people aren't adequately prepared for it. Uh, it's just that many people have not actually chosen to bring this Pokemon to major tournaments so far. So that concludes it for my take for the metagame at worlds. We've covered 10 different restricted Pokemon, but most of the analysis obviously was centered around seven being the Calyrex forms, Maridong, Coridon, Zamazenta, Terrapagos, as well as Kyogre. And then, like I said, the fringe prick picks in Groudon, Zacian, as well as Lunala. I think those are really the restrictions I would expect most teams at Worlds to center around, but Worlds is the premier tournament of the season. It's where people try to break the metagame. So if you told me that someone tries to bring a Kyurem white team to Worlds and makes it onto stream and does well, I wouldn't be shocked either. This is a really open format. There are so many teams and restricted Pokemon that are viable. So I wanted to just at least cover some of the most popular ways that people are using these Pokemon and strategies right now. That's going to be it for this one. So thank you so much for joining us here at Beast Coast Pokemon. I'm really excited to watch and of course compete in the World Championships myself alongside our entire Beast Coast team. Myself, James, and Wolf will all be competing at Worlds, and Rosemary will be commentating it, so you'll get full Beast Coast representation at this major tournament. So please cheer for us. Thanks for tuning into this video, and I'll see you soon.